Breaking news right now, a train derailment in East Palestine and then massive flames. The only way I can describe it, it's like the doors of hell were open. I mean, it was hot and the flames were shooting up in the air at least 100 feet. And a huge fire taking place at the moment in East Palestine. East Palestine is now under an urgent mandatory evacuation order. This was the scene in Columbiana County when emergency crews conducted a fiery controlled release in order to avoid what could have been a catastrophic explosion. We were wanting our forever dream home, you know, and we finally found it. I got a German Shepherd. Uh, we wanted land somewhere to run around and we wanted to start homesteading. By the looks of it now, it's, we don't know if that's gonna be the case. We heard some loud bangs and noises, um, and shortly after, someone told us about the train derailment. Um, I stepped outside. I, I, I could see f fire uh, hundreds of feet in the air and, and black smoke plummeting. We got home, and my son started stepson started developing a, a, a slight cough, a tingling in his throat. At that time, I was developing a pressure and feeling on my chest. I am in the natural gas industry. In my industry, we have personal gas detection monitors. We were coming home and I heard a beeping sound. I stopped and it, it was almost like a PTSD thing because if, if I hear that beeping on my personal monitor, that means get out. I pull back and look at the stop sign and it was an alarm for low oxygen. That's not necessarily immediate to life to have an 18.5 oxygen level, but in open atmosphere out in the world, you're not in a closed environment, that raised alarm initially. And there was black smoke plummeting over my neighborhood, okay? And this is before they did the controlled explosion and controlled release. And this creek runs from the town of East Palestine, under the highway, under our road, all the way through our property. Come, okay. You see the oil sheen? You see all that right there? Man, it's, it's, it, it's scary. We, we just want justice for our community. Whatever you are, Republican, Democrat, that's beside the point. We need to come, someone needs to come together and, 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 fi and fix this shit. For, sorry. I'm Terry Collins. I'm, I'm the Teresa Hines Professor of Green Chemistry and the Director of the Institute of Green Science at Carnegie Mellon. If you burn vinyl chloride, you certainly run the risk of making dioxins. And dioxins are massively significant endocrine disruptors. We, we have places in the world that the human injuries and in, 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 over multiple generations are, are just so stunning and so horrible. Obviously, you look at that black cloud and all kinds of chemistry that can be mischievous is going on there. We have a plastics in industry in denial that the additives that they use have these problems. We can take this East Palestine event as a warning, a very dramatic warning to the nation, Washington DC, everybody basically. You doing okay? Yeah. I was an extra in White Noise, in, filmed in Salem, and the whole plot is a train derails and creates an airborne toxic event and they have to evacuate. I would have rather have just been an extra in the movie and not had to deal with this in real life, but for people that are going through that, it's not entertaining, you know. This way, about nine-tenths of a mile, not even, is where the accident happened. Uh, looking right here, those are, those are the tracks, it's the same train track. I figured I needed to get out of there, so I started walking away. I took a little bit of video, and the plume was about three telephone poles length, and the flames were entwined in the smoke. That first evacuation order went out, and we, we left. We were a couple miles out of town, and then less than 24 hours later, they scheduled another press conference, and that press conference was to lift the evacuation order. Within a half hour, trains were running on the track already, so that those trains had to have been on their way before the order was even lifted. Trains are coming through, but 
there's still half melted rail cars all along the road coming, coming into town. It's incredibly astonishing that the very day that local residents were told that the evacuation order was lifted, the trains were already running. When the accident first happened, I was obviously concerned about the safety of local residents and first responders, but we didn't know immediately that vinyl chloride was in five of the train cars. When vinyl chloride is burned, a whole new suite of chemicals are produced, including dioxin. I think that this is a very serious problem, that there was no testing for dioxin in the first few days after the accident. Dioxin is the most toxic chemical known to science. Very small amounts of dioxin can do significant damage, not only to our health, but also to the broader outdoor environment. In the case of East Palestine, you had open, uncontrolled burning of vinyl chloride. New chemicals were created, quite possibly dioxin, and this is a very high price to pay just to make this one type of plastic. So we got Leo from a friend of Zach's from work, and he was, he was gray, he was fluffy, and so spunky. He turned into being my little sidekick, I mean, he was my boy. Tuesday was the day we had to put him to sleep. We were all staying in East Palestine. Our first thought was to grab the cats, make sure his grandparents were safe, make sure their dog was safe. He was heavy breathing, his heart was racing. I, truth be told, I thought he was having a panic attack. The vet specifically said that it was a genetic heart condition that was triggered by the vinyl chloride gases. That's what their diagnosis was. I don't know if you can see, but there's little carnations that Zach and my daughter put on there. It's probably a little extra for a cat, but it makes us feel better. It was our everything. They have like a little headstone made out of granite that you can get with a customized little picture and like his name and a little quote and like dates. What was the quote you picked out? Um, if love could have saved you, you would live forever. So we set up a little play area over here for them, so we kind of let them out. And then all the people from Circle K like to come over <laughs> and see that we have puppies. <laughs> Erica and I had a conversation that night. In that conversation, she said, you know, I feel like we need to do something. What are your thoughts? I said, yeah, I think you're right. We need to, we need to help. So we kind of put a thing out the very next morning. I am the humane agent for Columbiana County, Ohio. I know a lot of people can't afford to pay exorbitant fees at hotels to bring their pets. You know, I'm afraid people are going to leave their animals behind. I went into the town to the Red Cross Center on uh, Sunday morning and just started talking to people there and saying, give out the number, tell them to call us. And that's really when the phone never stopped ringing for the next 72 hours. I was retrieving a lot of animals from in East Palestine for people who didn't have transportation for their animals. Some didn't have transportation for themselves. First pulling into town, you, you were hit by this smell, you know, just general fire, but chemical smell of just burning plastic. So within 45 minutes of being in town, I had a headache, my throat was sore. I graduated from East Palestine High School. I have friends who live in town. I've had personal experience with environmental problems causing health problems for people. Um, I lost my father to esophageal cancer, and uh, which was caused by chemical exposure in car plants in Michigan. So I'm very intimate with how fragile our, our environment is. We live in a society of convenience. And if you do sit down and think, what is the cost of that convenience? What is the cost of making these safety devices, but the byproduct of the safety devices is so toxic? I do think it's something that we as a society do need to consider is what are the side effects of these things that we, that we have, that we use, and weighing the dangers. Vinyl chloride is a known carcinogen. It's also used to make 
polyvinyl chloride plastic. There's no market for using recycled vinyl chloride products. And we really have to ask ourselves as a society, is it really worth the risk to keep making such massive amounts of plastic? And who suffers when trains are derailed? Who suffers when vinyl chloride is manufactured? I think the solution here is rather obvious. It won't be easy, but I'm calling on the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to start taking steps to ban the production of vinyl chloride. Beyond Plastics is launching a public petition calling upon the federal EPA to ban vinyl chloride. And if anyone is interested in signing that petition, they can go to beyondplastics.org to sign this petition to the EPA.